Taking a live look at the state capitol, where acting Governor Eleni Kunalakis has declared today Gloris Huerta Day as the civil rights icon turns 94 years old. Reporter Tony Lopez spoke with Huerta about her lifetime commitment to social change. If anything, we are bringing the issue right into everybody's home, into everybody's organization. And so I don't think we're taking away from the issue. Si se puede, yes we can. Dolores Huerta turned that phrase into a battle cry. Pero aquí en Arizona no se puede. Mi respuesta para ellos fue, si se puede, si se puede. And destined to define a moment. Yeah, my dad was a farm worker, he was a mine worker. Then he ran for the state assembly in New Mexico and he was elected as an assemblyman. My mother worked two jobs actually uh, when we were young. Uh, so she, until she saved up enough money to start her own business. Her mother moved the family to the Central Valley. I consider Stockton my hometown. <laughs> she would go on to college and become a school teacher herself. She would see so many of the farm worker kids were coming to the classroom and you could see that they were malnutrition, that uh, they didn't have good clothes to wear, good shoes to wear. All that poverty found in these fields, some of the richest ag land in the United States. So Dolores took a leap of faith, quitting her job as a teacher to become a community organizer, mobilizing the workers in these very fields of the Central Valley. Dolores credits her mentor, Fred Ross Sr., an influential labor organizer in Southern California, for teaching her how to get it done. When I saw the presentation that Fred Ross gave us, I thought this is the way that you make changes. Right? Now an activist, Dolores started to fight for the rights of Mexican farm workers and their families. In 1962, Dolores moved on to work alongside Cesar Chavez. Together they started the United Farm Workers Association. We were both very like-minded when it came to the mission of the organization. Uh, to empower people, to empower farm workers. Serving as the vice president of the UFW and raising 11 children, Dolores negotiated contracts, advocated for safer working conditions in the fields, and challenged the machismo culture at the time. Dolores would continue leading demonstrations, including one in San Francisco, where a police officer hit her with a baton. He hurt me pretty bad, he broke my ribs, and. Uh, my, my, my spleen was uh, pulverized, I couldn't even find it. It hit me so hard that it just burst. After a lengthy recovery, followed by the death of Cesar Chavez, Dolores left the UFW in 2002. She created the Dolores Huerta Foundation in Bakersfield. So we still have a long way to go when it comes to taking care of the farm workers in our country. Huerta says she and Cesar Chavez were equal partners at the UFW, but she does regret one thing. That is when Chavez asked her if he could be the group's spokesperson, and she said yes. Apparently she would have liked to have shared that job.